If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Parents and Addicts in Need at 559-579-1551 or check us out online at painnonprofit.org. Follow us on social media at Pain Nonprofit. Please subscribe to the podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. To donate, please click the link in the description and help us save more lives gripped by addiction. All this stuff started coming up and I had to be, you know, in this really uncomfortable place of, oh, that's why I'm a hustler. Oh, that's why I'm constantly working because I don't want to be with these feelings, you know, right. and, and, and the feelings and all this stuff is this nine-year-old kid. <laughs> this right. is not right. a 53-year-old man dealing with the world. Don't Hide the Scars, a weekly podcast focused on addiction and recovery. Created by the nonprofit Pain, parents and addicts in need, and founded by Flint Anderson. Mark Gann, thank you for joining the founder of Parents and Addicts in Need, Flint Anderson, thank you, and Jason. myself, Jason, on the Don't Hide the Scars podcast. How's it going, brother? Great, great, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Doesn't he look like a movie star? You know what he does. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sitting here going, I want to be you when I grow up. You know, Stop. Uh, the only man I know that outshine Brad Pitt in a movie scene. So <laughs> go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. Uh, Oceans. Uh, which Oceans what is the first one, right? Yeah, it's the first one. Oceans 11. Yeah. Yeah. Playing a playing that. a bartender. The irony of a guy in recovery playing a bartender. a bartender. I know. I know. It was like it was the perfect part for me. Like I'm good at that, you know. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I played Sam Malone for a few years when I first sought recovery, like uh, bartending at catering gigs. It's like, how do you do that? I don't know. It helps yeah. me not drink to get other people schnockered. I don't know. That's right. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but of course, we had your lovely wife, uh, wife Brianna, on before, and you know, such insight with uh, uh, sex and love addiction. But you, I guess we could say, a dual diagnosed. Uh, you know, yeah. you were in every substance under the sun, but then later to come to. Uh, the terms of of uh, financial to struggles, the debtors anonymous that people aren't as aware of, and I know so many of us with addiction fall into. I mm -hmm. finally started to get my shit so together, uh, so to speak, uh, financially. What for you? Maybe the, the people don't understand about going down that debtors anonymous route that helped you. Just what was your clarity moment? Like, oh my gosh, this this is a major problem, and I need help. Yeah, you know, so it's, you know, I, uh, I was very fortunate, I got sober uh, at 19. So, you know, I had, you know, a good, about six years of like partying and, you know, screwing on my life and wrecking cars and, you know, putting the people and, you know, that are around me in danger and, you know, stuff. And so I was fortunate to get sober early. And, you know, I worked a program, I went to AA and I, you know, I, uh, you know, changed my life. I got the cash and prizes, you know, things were good. I was about 20 years sober. And the one thing that just like was, oh, I mean, now I look at now, now I can go back and go, there's, there's a lot more than just one thing. <laughs> but at the time, at the time, I felt the one thing that was still problematic for me was finances. Like I didn't understand, you know, I worked really hard, um, you know, and, and I played hard. I'd spend, you know, if I were, if I made money, I would spend the money and, and sort of the, the uh, sort of having this sort of inconsistent uh, relationship with money. Like there was a time where like when, when money was coming, it was like, yes, this is how it's going to be. It's going to just this trajectory, this thing is going to go this way. And then then it wouldn't. And then I was like, I don't understand why. Okay. I just need to work harder. Maybe I need to work harder, make more money. Um, and, you know, really uh, it was this thing that just kept going. It was like, it's just a cycle that would happen. Like I would make some money, I'd feel good. And then for some reason I would find myself back to zero again. Right. And this, this, the final time, you know, was uh, at the highest of my high. Like I had just like the, you know, I had sold this show to, to a studio. I was, you know, winning awards. I had this beautiful girlfriend who's now my wife and my life was fantastic. There's really nothing, there's really nothing that I could see that was wrong on the outside, except inside, like inside right. there still was this, this hole, you know, like I had 20 years sober, but I wasn't actually 
having emotional sobriety. I wasn't right. actually in, you know, I wasn't in a place where I had a relationship with a higher power and that I was, you know, working a program to the degree that I needed to. And and so the money thing was one of the things that that stood out. And I was in a meeting um, of AA and, you know, this, the speaker was talking and she just all sort of her, her journey and where it was more, what it was like now kind of thing. And and um, sort of her career changed and, you know, things, it was a lot, of, there was a lot of money stuff talking, you know, that she was talking about, like stability and things like that. And, and uh, at the end, you know, she was, you know, said, thank you. She, oh, oh, and I, you know, I just uh, shout out to, you know, Debtors Anonymous, which, you know, that was, you know, another program that saved my life. Okay, thank you. You know, and I was like, what, what? Debtors, what, what's that? What's that? 20 years over, never heard of Debtors Anonymous. What's that? I never heard of that. And so I, we went, walked outside and talked to her and she told me about a meeting and I went to the meeting. And I was like, started listening to what I was hearing. And there had a lot of common themes and things that I was hearing um, that were very similar to mine. And it's, it's a similar, you know, as to any addiction that it's sort of affecting, you know, my self-worth, my value, you know, how I, um, you know, uh, carry myself in the world, what, where, where I think, you know, sort of my value is. And, you know, the big, the big part of it became about sort of this, you know, another way for me to escape how I'm feeling, you know, right. You know, the way I was, you know, sort of the, the, the uh, environment, you know, at a young age with divorce and separation and, you know, different, you know, things that were going on that was just, I wanted to escape. So, so that escape, you know, worked early on from stealing to video games, yep. to TV, to movies, to, you know, um, to, you know, wanting, you know, to have a fantasy that if I had all this stuff, things would be, I would be okay. You know, right. if I achieved these things, this would be, I would be okay and loved and everything. And so I think that at the bottom, I could say that for my drinking, all those actually, you know, those that as the, my alcoholism, the same sort of thing, all those things, you know, to avoid the way I'm feeling, you know, hopefully something on the outside will fix that, you know. Uh, Flint, are with you, because Flint has a, a, a treatment facility as well. Are you finding that that is one of the struggles with people when they're getting back out there, that understanding and grasping of, of finance? Because I know for me, uh, you know, Mark, at the uh, conversations that we've had, it was to carry that facade, like, okay, I can stop the drinking, but I still want to carry this facade and belief. And it's, you it's, know. it's huge. I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. And especially this age group of, you know, mid twenties to, to early thirties. Um, nobody that, that comes through our door does not struggle with that, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and, and, and I want to add something else too. A lot of these, these kids, because everybody to me now is a kid, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, they all not only the finances, but they they really struggle with the sex addiction part of this thing mm -hmm. and the massage parlors that are going out. It's nothing for these kids to spend a hundred dollars a day, you know, um, going into a yeah. massage parlor and mm -hmm. then hitting the Indian casinos um, yeah. that 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 we have around here. You know, that that financial piece is so important in somebody's recovery. And because when I got out of treatment, my last one, you know, in 2001, um, God, I was, I mean, I was just in the poorhouse. You know, I, right. I, I basically lost it all. Um, and of course I get asked all the time, you know, well, how, how, how did you get out of it? And I said, you know, it's pretty simple. I said, I paid everybody $5 a month yeah. and, and whether they accepted it or not, that's what I did, you know? And at some point, if you follow that good financial plan, you will get out of it at some yeah. point if you continue to follow the plan. But Mark, you also said something too that, that I really, really like. You're talking about the sober part of this. To me, clean and sober has two different meanings. Clean to me means you are off of alcohol and drugs. Sober to me, to the general world, it means, oh, they're, they're sober now from alcohol. To me, sober is living that nice, good, clean, non-perfect life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which is just, you're just kind of going along and following the rules and doing your best. And again, you're going to make mistakes every single day, but that's what sober is to me. Yeah. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's, I don't know. I've always, I've always thought that. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think for the longest time, you know, there, there was a part of me that just thought the first part of that, the clean was like that. I'm, I'm off the, mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything. So, you know, I'm good. 
right? right you know, like right. everything's good. And it's like, but yeah, but there's the other part of that, which is, you know, how do I, you know, be, be, uh, a useful member of society, you know, how do I, you know, res- right. Respect, respectful and <laughs> right. All those things. Yeah, exactly. All those. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause the last thing I was, was respectful to anybody when, <laughs> exactly. I, when, when I was using, you know, exactly. and, you know, and it's the old AA saying, what do we have to change about ourselves in recovery? And it's a one word answer, everything, Yeah, you everything. Know? exactly. but, but you don't have to do it immediately. No, well, you can't. That's the thing. That's the thing. You can't, you can't because you can't, you know, I mean, the whole, the whole, you know, again, I, I don't know if this, if, if both of you are, you know, 12 step or whatever, but for me, 12 step is where it yep. has worked for me. And, and the steps for me have, is very, they, they, they're very, they're, they're set out um, very simple for guys that are very complicated like me, which basically is saying yeah. you cannot figure out your own problems. You can't get out of the same problem that got you here. So right. here's the only way out, which is to 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 out of self into a higher power and the higher power can relieve you of yeah. all of this. And that's where it like the big sort of shift has happened for me to sort of that emotional sobriety where it's like the the ego disease is over here all the time. It's never going to stop. It's going to be there, but it doesn't, I'm not identified as it, as that anymore. It's no longer like I'm having this day and this thing and you guys and these people and this thing, it's like, no, here it is. That is, mm-hmm. there it is. There's all the stuff. And over here is, to me, I've been sort of like saying this recently, you know, last year and a half is like, there's disease, ego, and then here's God, you know? And, yeah. and I, and when I can, stop and see that I'm not this stuff all the time, then I'm able to pause. And it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable being in this thing because I want to fix it. I want to get, and that was sort of what was happening with the, the, the shift from, you know, getting, you know, solvent was uh, I thought I could do the same thing. Like some people try to get sober and go, I'm just not going to drink today. I'm going to just stop right. drinking again. I'll tomorrow. I'll just stop. I, w- this is what I know I need to do. I just need to not drink tomorrow. And I would say, I just need to make more money. I just right. need to get a budget. I just need to do a thing. And it's like, all those things are sort of band-aids for mm-hmm. the work that happens, you know, inside. And so that's where that, that big shift for me, um, you know, it only takes 33 years that I finally get, like, <laughs> oh, it's this. And that's what I was going to say. I can't, in the beginning, it's, you know, it's so, there's so much work that needs to happen for us to sort of break, to to sort of see like, oh, you mean I'm not my story? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm not this stuff. Oh, I've created this. Oh, how do I get out? Oh, I can't figure out how to give it. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I have to right. turn it over. What does that mean? How do I turn it over? You know, and it's that process of like, oh yeah, it's here. Hey, what do I need to do today? You know, so it's interesting how you share that. It, you know, it's that negotiating, like when you were, you know, drinking and drugging, and me yep. and you, where it's like, ah, two beers is okay, or yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I'll only pop five pills. You know, it's that yeah. same negotiation going right, yeah. on. Exactly. Oh man. New Perceptions North, the premier drug and alcohol treatment and recovery center in Central California. A full continuum of medically supervised top quality care with programs for detox, inpatient residential treatment with dual diagnosis, intensive outpatient treatment, sober living, support groups, and more. With 50 plus years of combined experience and sobriety, Flint Anderson and Thelma Gatlin Wilson provide adult men and women with the highest caliber of professional health care, treating each client with compassion and respect, in a safe, comfortable environment. To begin the process of recovery, to proudly create and sustain a life without addiction, call 559-978-1507 or visit newperceptionsnorth.com. So, I mean, you were with uh, Brienne, now your wife. How did you think in retrospect, maybe to help others identify that and, and it's a really a very much a plague of relationships because finances is a big part oh, of huge. intimacy yeah. uh, and transparency. But that her sex and love addiction, when we say that she was more the love side sex, of course, or the component of love and being in a committed relationship with you, did that play into the facade you felt you had to carry? Oh, a hundred percent, you know, and what that and and what that's really meant. And, you know, like I said, this, you know. 33 years into it, you know, that it's like, you know, I had in December of 
this last year, you know, I had a second surrender. I literally hit a place where it was like, I, the I, last April, I'd sort of realized that a lot of what I was doing was, um, you know, under the guise of like, I'm a hustler. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to do this kind of stuff. All that was really doing was just ego. It was just like, you know, sure. trying to avoid sort of being me, I'm afraid of all those feelings, all that stuff I'd been sort of just like, just, just ahead of, you know, like they're just like right there, you know, if I can just, stay, you know, if this job comes, then, okay, then all that stuff that's in my head and my self-worth is going to go away. And then it was like, it's not working. And so when I stopped doing that, all this stuff started coming up and I had to be, you know, in this really uncomfortable place of, oh, that's why I'm a hustler. Oh, that's why uh -huh. I'm constantly working because I don't want to, be with these feelings, you know, right. and, and, and the feelings and all this stuff is this nine-year-old kid. <laughs> this right. is not right. a 53 year old man dealing <laughs> right. with the world, you know what I mean? Right. And, and, and to be able to see that and, and you know, as we we're talking about, like having, having a son who's four and be able to say like, I want to change. I want to, I want to change. I want to be able to like create a space for him um, that's not, uh, based on like all the stuff that I grew up, like, how do I, how do I right. shift a con so just shift it? So there's a conversation. So he has a place, a safe place to, to talk, not nothing about my parents, like nothing bad. They were doing the best they could. They right. didn't have the tools. I have the tools now. So there's no right. excuse. There's no excuse for me to not, not to be able to say, Oh, wow. My son is going through something. He's having some feelings not to say, logically there's nothing to be worried about like why are you crying you know it's like you're crying okay cool yeah all good you know so that was all happening i was like oh wow this has to change and then all this what so all these feelings are coming up all this shift was starting to happen for me and i got this this project that came out of the blue for you know my my sort of career and it was like oh wow turning it over that's what it means like all this stuff and then uh in december the project sort of just took a different thing and the check didn't come in and anything was going to get pushed. And I had felt like in April, I sort of leapt and just, you know, I was like, ah, this is it. This is what emotional sobriety, this is what turning it over. I'm like, God's got me. And then December 1st, I was like, Holy, Oh, that's the ground. Holy shit. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And what ended up happening was, you know, five to six months, three for sure of like really intense um, five to six months of, very uncomfortable conversations with my wife, which is just what it's leading to is just sort of this, you know, what, you know, uh, what on the outside has felt always felt for both of us is like, I provide I'm I'm the guy, so I should be providing, you know, even though for the for the 17 years of our career, she has made our lives together, she has made way more money than me. <laughs> She's been more <laughs> successful in her career than me. Like it's 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 ridiculous. But in my mind, I have to make the money. And in yep. her mind, I have to make the money. I, we've set this, this relationship up this way, you know, right. based on old story, based on society, based on all this stuff. And so, and so as, as, as that started to shift through being in debtors anonymous and being able to like have conversations with her about, okay, look, let's look at our bills. This mm -hmm. for a long time, I've been doing this. It's not, it's not working anymore. Like the, the sort of, how do we, how do we find some, you know, a little bit more of a balance and the uncomfortable conversations, which then have led to stronger relationship and, you know, and a much clearer and more open conversation about money that still was predicated about Mark is going to be able to make enough money that she's going to feel secure right. and I'm going to feel loved um uh you know okay you know um you know uh valuable if i can do that and right. the minute that i can't do that all all bets are off now my all my self esteem everything that's been attached to doing this for her or achieving on the outside to a certain degree and having this thing which is going to lead to this which is going to lead to that all that was stripped away and i was literally going okay so how do I turn it over? How do, what, what do I, what does that look like to turn it over? And I was like, okay, so it was every week was this thing of like, oh, they're saying the check's going to come on Friday. So then the Friday, the Friday would come and there is no check. It, the thing got pushed. This thing would do this and have to sit there with her and say, yeah, the check's not here. And like, and, and realizing that my, my pattern for so long had been my turning over to higher power was I want this thing. Mm -hmm. I can't control getting that thing. So God, 
please take it from me. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, th this is up to you to, you know, if you want me to have it or not. I get it though, right? Like I'm going to get it if I, now that I've turned it over, I'm going to get it. And I started looking around the tree, around the corner, hoping that it's happened. And so when it didn't happen, I would be, you know, F God, this, this, why, Pissed what's off. going on? I, I, yeah, I should have done something. I should have did, I should have did this, you know, all this regret, all the shame, all this stuff, and this code of this, the cycle. And so what was happening in this last, these last five or six months was that I had to, the, the result of turning it over was, I couldn't, con I'm not going to control what the outcome is. So what happens when the check doesn't come, when I don't get the job is like, oh, we are still here. You and me, my wife yep. and I sitting in this conversation yep. in this house going, here's what I'm, here's my fears. Here's your fears. Here's what's triggering us to our six, seven year old. How do we get through this and know that there's no job. The job is not going to fix it. Cause in her mind, just get me, get a job, get the thing, right. you know? And I'm like, that's what I've been going for so long. But it's like, this is pushing us to lean into God, to lean into our higher power, to lean into saying, I'm okay. And I have to be humble and have humility that it's not going to, that I'm not going to have the money this week. I'm not right. going to have it. And I don't have it next month. I don't have it this. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It's the, old, it's the old saying, be careful what you pray for. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Because it's, it's like you, you, you start praying for this stuff and asking for this stuff and God's going to answer you. Yeah. Right. But he's going to give you his answer in his time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, believe me, that check's not coming. That check's not coming. You're going, God, what, what, what's the deal here? OK, you know what? <laughs> yeah. well, come on. I mean, we're, we're getting ready to starve. We're getting ready to do this. Yeah. Right. But that's that's what faith is. Right. Yeah. It's it, if we're going to ask him, then we better have the faith to believe that he is going to answer us. But we but sometimes we're not going to like the answer that he gives us. <laughs> No, there's a there's a great there's a great Bob D the speaker used to say I heard him always talk about he says uh, he says like you know um, you know I wanted God to like I turn my will in my life over to God and then he you know so I expect this thing but you know I want him to go so hey Bob so I'm gonna you know the job that you that you love that's so secure I'm gonna take that from you is that okay is it okay Bob you know or the girl that's like you know that you love so much she's gonna go drink and she's gonna like you know make your life a living hell is that okay if I just take her out of your life right now is that okay Bob that's what I want like I want that like I want I want more you know I want to know that it's gonna be okay which of course is, is part of my thing. Cause I, as a kid, I never had that stability. I never felt like I was okay. So I'm constantly, I, I need that. I need to know that like the next thing is going to be, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to, if I, if, cause there's no, there's nobody else that's going to take care of me because God right. sure is not going to take care of me. Cause if he did, he wouldn't have had me. And here I am now, you know, it's like this opportunity that I have to be of service and to change and to, to be talking to, you know, to you guys and go like, Oh yeah. This everything that happened was happening for a reason. Yeah. And now I can be have a conversation with my four year old in a way that, you know, that I know that my mom and dad would love to have been able to have with me at the time, right. you know, and be able to to sit there and say there are going to people that are not going to like you in school. Right. right, Brian. How many people don't like you? <laughs> How many people don't like you? And we talk about these things. We're able to talk about it and say, "There's nothing yeah. that you can do to make them like you. Like you don't yeah. have to be harder, try harder to be their friends. It's just like some people are just that's how it's going to be. And you can be sad, you can be upset, but you know. And it, just to have that, to be able to feel like he can come tell us that at four. Like, I didn't know, I didn't have anybody, I didn't know how to talk to people that way sure. to to you know my mm -hmm. parents. So so that's I think the gift that's happening for for both of us is to be able to like to do this work and then again as we're saying on a daily basis to him then we turn to each other and go like i guess we do, do need to turn it over like he can't right. expect he's going to get whatever he's going to want right babe we're not going to be able to get whatever we want every day so it's just like how do we do how do we lean into the higher power to say you know like is this what we're supposed to be doing and then you know the working out it does work out. It doesn't work out. It's it never like my, 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 so sort of microscopic finite idea of like how it's supposed to work out is never what it's, what it really right. is. And, and, and my fears never ever come true. My deepest fears have never come true. You know, right. my wife's still here. She still loves me. You know, I'm not perfect. And, you know, yeah. in her mind, if this thing could have been different, you know, she would like to avoid all that stuff as we do, but it worked out the way it is. And now we're tighter, you know, and it's a, and it's a, wow. it's a, um, 
it's something that, you know, we can both say, wow, like leaning into our higher power is not something that is our default. Our default is the other way. Like I got to figure it out. I got to do it kind of thing. I think you bring up an interesting point there too, that, and I'm sure you do in the parent meetings, talking with these families about the instability. I mean, childhood for you was, uh, yeah, that instability, divorce, you know, everything else. Um, you know, can you kind of speak to that and maybe the, the rewiring for yourself, uh, and even, you know, Brianne sharing, you know, her instability of, of, of home life, um, to kind of create more of a stable environment for what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we talk about it a lot as soon as that, you know, we're so blessed that we've had this, like, you know, I mean, the, the gift of the pan pandemic that has just really sort of slowed everything down for us to sort of go like, Oh, that's, and I think that was part of it. Like, Oh, my workaholism, my sort of like hustle, hustle, hustle kept me from being present. And, you know, as you know, you know, like the, the, you know, you want to be present, have a kid in front of you like that'll that'll that that that'll either want you to be present, you know, they either want to be present or to check out as soon as possible, because it's a lot, you know, either of those <laughs> things are, you know, are going at the same time. And so so for for me growing up, I think that, you know, the big the big thing was um, my parents got married very early. They had kids right away. They had three kids every, you know, basically every two years. And, you know, and by nine, you know, they just, they didn't want to be together. But I found myself at like seven, eight years old wanting to fix it, like when the arguing would happen. Mm -hmm. And so one of my pattern of my, one of my behaviors was to um, not be able to sleep. And I'd, I have to go out during the middle of an argument to have my mom come in and rub my back. So that basically solved the, I'd stop the argument right. that way. And, and there was this pattern of me trying to take care of that, you know, sort of find that security, find that, that um, thing. And then there was just this, you know, moving and staying in houses that we didn't feel safe in and so many different, the different elements that have now recently have been, been sort of brought back to my attention. There was a moment, um, you know, my mom is one of my biggest fans, so she'll probably be listening. So, mom, um, don't take this the wrong way. Um, <laughs> She's one of my fans, too, ironically. I know, I know. Um, but, you know, there was a time it was just, you know, there was we were living in a house that I didn't, you know, it wasn't a great situation. And I was I was in the car with my dad. It was my birthday. He had taken me out for my birthday. And and I turned to him. I said, I don't I don't want to go back in the house. I don't want to go back in there. And again, I love my dad. He's amazing. Didn't have the tools, didn't know what to do in that situation either. And, mm -hmm. and he just said, you know, um, it'll be fine. You're going to be fine. I love you. And then he just like reached over, opened the door for me to get out. And I was just like, it triggered me. It got triggered in this job that I'm working at where I feel like I'm telling these people these things like, look, it. I need some help. This isn't, this isn't, I don't feel safe. This needs to go this way. And they went, no, 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 it's going to go this way. And it's just like, oh, I'm not being heard. I'm not being, be, no one, no one's right. listening to me. Like, I don't have value. What I have to say doesn't have value. And so that kind of stuff had been, you know, so what I, so how does that affect me now? It's like, ask me what my favorite movie is. If I know what your favorite movie is, that'll be my favorite movie. It'll be in that mm -hmm. sort of realm, you know, right. it's like, how do I do that? And now I have a job where I'm a director, where I have, you know, 150 people looking at me going, so Mark, what fit, what's your favorite mo movie? What's your favorite color? What, what is this supposed to be gold or is this yellow? Mm -hmm. What is the thing? And it's like, I have to say it's this. And I'm like, every part of me is like, but if I say that, are they going to, you know, do they, is it right? Is it, is, is it going to be okay? Is it, are people going to like me? If, you know, what if I say the wrong thing, then I'm going to be, you know, all that stuff. So having, you know, coming from that, um, that space of when there's there's not that um sort of security or stability then when that's happening now when there's the money's not there when the check's not there when you know something's you know we're having a disagreement or something i get into that i just go right back to that kid who's afraid that you know i it's not going to work out that no one's going to be here for me that i'm going to be left behind that you know it's not i'm not i'm not valued or loved or you know, I, or I have to figure it out. Okay. I'm going to figure it out. I got my brother and sister. We'll figure out dinner. Let's I'll figure out dinner for us. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like that mode of, 
you know, shucking and jiving, making sure that everybody knows everything's fine on the outside because I can't really reveal that how could I feel this way, you know, at 53, you know, this is silly. I should, I should have already figured this out by now, you know, right. but I'm, I'm acting as a six or seven year old, you know, that's what's, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. I'm coming from that space. Of course, I'm not supposed to know at six or seven, how to like handle that situation. But now I can go, oh yeah, that's not the situation. Oh, I'm here, 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 this is present. This is the moment, you know, this is a different time. You know, I have some different tools, you know, I can reach out to people. I can do, you know, do that. And um, I have no idea if I've got off track. I feel like I answered your question, <laughs> the childhood instability, but you know, uh, no, perfect because it, it it brings to me immediately to mind it to talk with Flynn about the things that you confront with that instability in the, the parent group meetings, which are they're really great. We do them now via Zoom, might be one thing. Maybe have you got you and Brienne hop on there, oh, sometime love that, lend yeah, some insight. Great. But that instability, I mean, how often is that coming up with it? I mean, not only does the addict, as we know, we bring amazing instability because you can show up one day. Hi, guys. Good to see you. And the next night, it's like, all right, I'm getting fucked up, mm -hmm. you know? So um, how do you kind of, with the crosstalk with, with people, has that become prevalent, the, the, the reality of the instability? Oh, absolutely. Um, look... <laughs> When, when, when I, when, when parents come into our meeting, everybody's unstable. I, 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 I mean that it is, it's mass chaos, you know, with, with, with these parents. And, you know, one of the things we try to get across in these parent meetings, of course, we, we crosstalk. There's a lot of support groups out there that don't, I'm a huge fan of Al-Anon. I'm a huge fan of Narnon, but they don't crosstalk. They don't give suggestions. They do don't do those things. And when I started this thing back in 2009, I wanted to be able to give, to give my knowledge, not that I'm always right. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I'm not, but at least give that perspective to these parents of coming from the addict of this is what we're capable of. This is what we're not capable of. Uh, explain the instability of, of, of addicts and, and, and where we're at. And, and so we can get those parents closer, you know, and we have, we've gotten them closer for so long now to under, to at least try to understand you know, what that addict is and who they are and why they're doing what they're doing and try to understand that brain of theirs. Um, it's really, really good stuff. Um, yeah. but I'll tell you what, guys, I, I, I'm still as unstable as they come half the time. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be 67 here in another couple of weeks and it's, and it's like, I got nothing figured out. Okay. Yeah. I, I, got, I got nothing. All right. It's, I wake up every morning and go, God, okay, buddy, it's your, it's your, it's your show. All right. Yeah. Just kind of, uh, just kind of tell me where to go here. Cause oh God, I, I, I think it's for, as uh, one of the things that uh, I enjoy about, uh, following you on social media, Mark, is that we're both kind of old philosopher guys and it immediately makes yeah. me think of you know Socrates. all that i know is that i know nothing that's it you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the end of the exactly. day and 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 thank you for sharing what you have because yeah. it speaks to our character defects you know and that yeah. misconception that i'm sober this will go away no some of this stuff is just us who we are and it's our job to create the boundary with ourselves because if we don't yeah. we can't have it with anyone else and, and by I the way it's okay not to know everything yeah you know i yeah. mean come on i i, I really don't want to know everything yeah. You know, it's, it's, and, and you're talking about your four-year-old son, you know, mine are now, you know, God, what are they? 40, 40 43 40. and 37. <laughs> I mean, I lose track. Um, uh, but you know, look, you are in such a, both of you guys are in such great positions with your, with your small kids. Now I wasn't, Yeah, I mean, I was, I was neck deep in my addiction through almost their entire lives until they turned 19 and 14, whatever, whatever it was. You know, you guys are just, I would love to be in your spot right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. show that, show that vulnerability. You know, I, I, I mean, you don't have to be perfect around your kids, but, but mm -hmm. believe me, you, you, you don't have to be, but that yeah. vulnerability and, and the wisdom now that you bring, because you guys have got some, some serious clean time under your belts. Yeah. My God, I would give my left, you know what, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, 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 to be in that position. And I see guys now, like I said, that are, that are clean and sober, by the way, and, and doing what you're doing. I, I I'm just, I'm just amazed at, at, for both of you, man. I mean, this is, this is good stuff.
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know, Jason, you and I have talked about it too. It's just like, it is like, there's the, there is this, this place that, you know, even, even being clean, as we were just talking about, you know, okay. it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily not in my disease, you know, all the time. And, you know, just, I can see one of the things that happened in February for us was, and we were just, you know, talking about last night, um, was uh, that in February, as the movie was about to start, um, you know, Brian said, you know, I'm, I'm concerned for us mm -hmm. because when you do a movie, you sort of check out like you, everything's about the movie and you just become obsessed. And like, yep. we're over here sometimes whenever, when you're, when you're done, basically. And when you're here, you're not really here because you're in your head thinking and trying to figure things out and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, she was like, I just don't know. Like, I'm afraid, you know, if this is successful, then it's going to lead to something bigger. And then like, I don't think we're going to last. And I was like, what? Huh? huh? What? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And it was just really powerful. And for, you know, and what we were saying last night, it was my first instinct is to say that this job, this job was different and I did it differently. But I want to say, oh, I made this big shift. Like I made this commitment to you. I made a shift. And it's like, no, I was in so much pain that I had to surrender to God. You know, I had to surrender through this whole process where every day was like, oh, yeah, I don't have to control this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to. It, there, it's going to be OK if, if Mark doesn't send that email. If I don't send that email, if I don't fix this, if I don't tell them that this is wrong, if I don't do all that stuff. Once I started to do that, the the behavior of, of me not taking actions out of fear because I was afraid that it was going to fail or that, that you know, I'm not going to be heard or whatever. It's like, okay, once I stop doing that, oh, wow, I'm present to my family when I'm here at home because I'm not in my head thinking I need to make that email. See, if I told them, see, she said that thing, maybe I could take thing. What, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw out the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was how it was for me. And to, to sort of to see this going on and go, oh yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the ego over there trying to, you know, is afraid that I'm going to fail. Like I can wait till seven 30 to look at those emails. Let us right. have our dinner. Let's walk the dog. Let's have fun. Let's play. Let's put him down and then go to that. And, and so that, but it, it's because I'm trusting my higher power, not because I've made the, like the ego wants to say, I made the decision. <laughs> I stepped up, babe. You know, I made that, you know, I made it about you. You know, it's like, no, I had to make it about God because I had to make it about something other than myself and worried about that kind of stuff. So that has been the big thing to be present for him and to be able to, 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 to not show him that, you know, you, you you're gonna have to you know if you want something you gotta work super hard and you gotta like do all this stuff it's like well, maybe not <laughs> you uh, know maybe you don't have to do that you know you show up and you, you know when it's time to work you do your work and then when you're not you're you're here and you're present and you're doing the next thing so you're not just always worried about like you know because he started to say something about like so so but when are we gonna do that is that next week and i said yeah it's next week so let's don't worry about that. Like, we'll, we'll talk about it on Friday, you know, because right. it's so easy for us to get in that future of like, well, when's the, you know, I mean, even like the other, like Christmas or something It's like, when's the Amazon package coming from grandma? And like, don't worry about the Amazon package. What are we doing right now? You know, but it's hard because we, it's sort of that dopamine of wanting that other thing, you know? And so I, you know, it's, 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 it's almost like I, you know, me personally, I can't set boundaries for myself. <laughs> Right. I, I, I mean, it's, I, I can set them for, I'm going to try to explain this, right. I, I can set them for other people. I have a hard time setting them for myself and I actually have a hard time setting my boundaries so I can spend more time with my family. Mm. That's what I was thinking when Mark was talking with son of a bitch, I need to do another assessment with rigorous honesty about myself. I'm right? sitting there thinking last night, I'm texting back and forth with you and other people to get guests. And whereas my kids are wanting to talk before uh -huh. bedtime and I piss that time away. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. so, <laughs> shit. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. It's like, it's hard, but you know, I, I, it, the 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 joke is is like there's this there's this window at you know between 4 30 and 7 30 like i pick him up at, at daycare or preschool and then we he goes down at 7 30 and it's like we've made this like it's this is it this is what we're doing during this time now obviously if there's like an emergency or something else like you know like we have clients or something going on we'll you know we'll address you know we'll go in the other bedroom and we'll 
do what we need to do. But we try for the most part, you know, 95% of the time it's, it's that. And that's what everybody calls. Like I'll tell them I'm not available this time. And like everything is the emergency that they have. And I go, it's really not an emergency. It's not an emergency. Right. It's not an right. emergency. It's not an emergency. It's so, cause I feel in my mind, you know, there's that, that old part of me that feels like it's, I have to do this right now. I'm the only guy that's going to do it. And it feels so urgent and important that this has to happen right now, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you ought to see the look on my wife's face when we're at Christmas dinner and my phone rings. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, she, and, and I gotta say, my wife has been wonderful through all that. I married to the same woman. We, we just celebrated 43 years wow, and, uh, and, and, but I'll tell you what, there does come a moment every now and then when that phone rings a little too much, or I need to go speak somewhere or I need to go somewhere. And she's just like, you know, the evil eye is just <laughs> yeah. coming right yeah, at yeah. me. Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, I've been uh, kind of blessed to have her. I got to say that. Uh, but but this is all great stuff for people to understand. Hey, it's going to, it's, it's continual work yeah, and, and, and that's a good thing. That's, that's a part of it, but, yeah. but taking onus and recognition. Yep. And like you said, let's, let's not do the edging God out ego there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, and take take freaking hands off the wheel. Right. Uh, I mean, I wish we had so much more time uh, to to dig into your wisdom, but I'd really like you to speak um, to the young addict. It's something that we're faced with here quite frequently, especially uh, you know, Mark, and I'm sure you're seeing it in L.A. But man, the opioid fentanyl oh. crisis and yeah. What we're Scary. seeing, we are seeing younger and younger and younger dealing with the fact that they are becoming addicts at a very young age. And, yeah. uh, you know, I continue to salute you for that. The 19, I couldn't imagine. I, I hadn't yeah. even started to into my addiction <laughs> for another right. three years. And you were like, nope, yeah. getting cleaned up. Yeah. You know, I'll, I, you know, it's funny, as I'll say, like, go, looking back at that, that time, you know, um, I mean, I was. I was doing Coke and crystal meth every day. You know, I was working construction. I was working with guys that were 25 years older than me, that that's what they did. And, you know, we, we drank and we did that. And, you know, um, there was a pattern that was happening prior to that, but getting to that point and that when it's, when it stopped working, when, you know, the cars kept getting crashed and parents were saying, nobody can come here. And then another friend said, you can't live here. And I had like nowhere to go, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like, oh yeah, yeah, I need help. Cause I had nowhere to go. I was sort of like, you know, once right. again, the, right. you know, the walls are crashing and, uh, and I went to the, this treatment center for 30 days and, um, you know, every day I would sit in the room and I would, you know, just say that, you know, I'm not like you guys, right? Like I'm 19, my friends, we party. Yeah. I drink too much. Yeah. I, you know, I could, you know, it's like the cocaine if I just stopped doing that, you know, and, and I'd listen to this thing over and over, you know, I'd listen to, you know, these stories and just, you know, again, I'm like, I can't relate. And, was probably towards the end of the this the you twenty know, seventh twenty eighth day or something, and I was in a meeting, and and I you know of course you know I, they took us to an AA meeting, and I had to you know I wanted to voice my I wanted to show how I'm so different, I'm so right. unique from all of you old people that are like thirty, and um, <laughs> and uh, and how I'm different you know than this, even though like my grandparents and my uncles and aunts were all either sober or active alcoholics like it was in my family like i knew sure. all that but like it just i didn't see it for myself and um and so i had shared and i sort of you know was like sort of you know sat back down like yeah take that you know drop the right. mic sort of thing and uh this <laughs> this older guy got up to to the podium and uh you know this was not a, this is you know aa northern california not necessarily cross talk timing kind of thing they were just like you know you just you you, you say your thing and that's it and he's like i just want to like <clears throat> To, to this kid here, um, if you listen to all of our stories, you know, and then you listen to yours, by the time we were 19, we're all the same, all the same feelings, all the same reasons, all the same stuff. Now, after that, you know, we've lost houses, we've lost careers, we've yeah. killed people, we've been to prison, um, we've seen our friends commit suicide, you know, so, so all these things are, are available to you. Mm -hmm. If you continue down this road, but you're no different. You're just right. 19. Right. And so for me, that was a huge sort of eye opening thing. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And, uh, and three days later, I thought I could just have one drink and that would be it. And I couldn't, you know, 
next morning I'm selling my watch for a line of cocaine after just right. one drink. And it was like, right. oh yeah, I can't just have one drink. But that thinking of, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm no different than them because it's not about the outside stuff of what I did, or it's not that bad. It's about here. It's about yeah. why am I doing this? Why am I drinking? Why am I doing drugs? Why am I trying to avoid? What is that same right. feeling that every single person in this room can relate to, mm -hmm. you know? And that was the big thing for me is like, I had to find, you know, the, the willingness to sit in a chair and say, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know. I don't know if this, if I'm an alcoholic or not, but you know, I'm here and listen to this stuff and do the stupid writing that you want me to do and yeah. get on my knees and all this stuff. And, you know, and it, you know, it worked, it works, you know, my life got better, you know, so. It does get better, doesn't it? Hey, yeah. Flynn, what's one of my favorite sayings? No outside solutions to inside, inside problems. problems. That's yeah. it. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Hey, Mark, if uh, folks maybe want to want to find you, follow you, really do post a lot of uh, uh, great stuff. I know when you get busy with work, it's a little bit harder, but yeah. I love like a lot of the Thank philosopher you. quotes and things Thanks. like that. If people want to connect with you online, maybe pick your brain about Debtors yeah. Anonymous or something so you can connect them maybe to, uh, to a meeting. Uh, how can they do so? Uh, I'm Mark Gant, everything. So at Mark Gant, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, my website's Mark Gant. Uh, my email's Mark Gant at gmail.com. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm here to help. Yeah. And you do do su still some coaching and, and, and things with folks too, right? Yep. I do stuff for career stuff or, you know, um, you know, artists and filmmakers, as well as, you know, starting to coach, you know, doing some sober coaching and things like that. But yeah, we do all that kind of stuff now too. Awesome. Mr. Anderson. That's good stuff, Mark. That is Thank really, you. really good stuff, man. Thank it has you. been, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Jason's been talking about you forever. Okay. Oh, and, I, and I'm just thrilled that we had this opportunity and man, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much. Bri Brianne and I should definitely, you know, head up one of your parents' meetings. We'd love to do that. Oh, anytime. But believe me, any Wednesday night, man, you're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Parents and Addicts in Need at 559-579-1551 or check us out online at painnonprofit.org. Follow us on social media at Pain Nonprofit. Please subscribe to the podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. To donate, please click the link in the description and help us save more lives gripped by addiction.